to the war against ISIS. I'm now joined by Seth Fransman of MECRA, the Middle East Center for Reporting and Analysis, and his Neighborhood Watch segment, which this week focuses on eyewitness accounts from two key areas in northern Syria, Manbij and Raqqa. Seth, welcome. Thank you for having me. So uh, tell us about what your people on the ground are reporting. Let's start with Manbij. Right, so Jonathan Spire was there basically last week, mm -hmm. and Manbij is really important because it's next to the Euphrates, and it's an area that Turkey basically would like to have its rebels take over. Right. And right now you have Kurdish-backed forces there in Manbij, and you have Americans, and you have Turks on the other side, and you have the French. So it's this kind of combustible situation Absolutely. in which everyone is looking at it, including the Syrian regime. And any misstep could cause maybe another conflict or all sorts of things to go wrong. But uh, we've read in the, at least Ankara has reported about uh, this deal with the United States that uh, ejected the, um, um, the Kurds out of Manbij. Right, so that's what's really interesting. Jonathan got to go there. He saw what's happening on the ground. For instance, civilian life is flourishing. The markets are open. The, the town looks normal. Mm -hmm. And what's not normal, of course, is the strange situation around it. And what's interesting is that, yes, the YPG, or the kind of Kurdish part of the SDF, mm -hmm. has basically withdrawn. What they've left behind is the Manbij Military Council, uh -huh. which they still have a major role in. So, yes, the council has kind of a different flag and a different name. But that way, the Turks can say, okay, we got the Kurds to go back, and the Kurds and the U.S. partners, the SDF, which is Kurdish and Arab forces, can keep control of Manbij, and the Americans and the Turks have this kind of patrol line around Manbij, which we have some footage of and we had some pictures of. Yeah, we're looking at some right now. So it's fascinating, I mean, the way in which both sides don't want a conflict, so each side says, okay, we'll do this, we'll do this, and each one pretends to be happy, but in the end of the day, something has to change eventually and the Turks right. are not happy and as you know there's the uh, Turkish American tensions are very high right obviously now. Well, well now what is, has Spire uh, told you about the the feelings of the Kurds uh, in the Manbij area do they feel betrayed by their uh, coalition allies well I think the Kurds are in a very difficult situation now because you know they've carved out this big piece of Syria Kurds had no rights in Syria for a long time now all of a sudden they kind of run part of it as part of this SDF US part hard earned with their blood yeah they I mean they defeated ISIS if it was not for them ISIS would still control part of Syria mm -hmm, today indeed. so but you know the Kurds need services and people in living in that area want basic things like passports right electricity ah oh, there's Jonathan so, uh, yeah. yeah so for instance they sent a delegation to Damascus to ask Damascus okay yes we're here yes you don't agree with us on certain things right. but we need basic services and you know the Americans of course are doing the military aspect which is fighting ISIS right but someone has to deal with civilian affairs so it's a very complicated situation right now and the war against ISIS is kind of wrapping up so it's a question is okay well what comes next after this well let's move it on to Raqqa the former capital of this uh, so-called caliphate um, a coalition uh, top officer told uh, Pentagon reporters this week that life has uh, improved in Raqqa things are uh, ISIS has totally cleared out and things are returning to normal what are you hearing that's the great thing about having someone on the ground, someone like Jonathan or some of our other colleagues that are also working there, is mm -hmm. that, you know, what he saw in the pictures we, what he brought back was, you know, destruction throughout the city, very little civilian life. And they're still excavating mass graves in Raqqa. They found thousands of corpses that were buried by ISIS during the three-year occupation. Some mm -hmm. children, women, it's not clear if these are all victims of people that were killed by ISIS. Some of them may have been killed in coalition bombing. The point is, you're talking about a multi-year, maybe 10-year process of trying to get rid of the IEDs, bring the city back to normal, basic life. And I think right. that's the really interesting thing about the pictures we have on our website, the video that is coming back, and it's really great. But it obviously contradicts, I think, some of these rose-colored glasses in terms of, yes, stabilization and rebirth of the civilian population. It's hmm. a long way to go. And finally, uh, what's next? Uh, the third phase of this uh, Operation Roundup is about to begin. They're focusing east of the Euphrates. Uh, you expect uh, real uh, brutal fighting? I don't think it is brutal fighting. I mean, I think that ISIS is basically in a desert area next to the border. They're in tunnels. It's just a few guys. If you look at the coalition airstrikes, it's here and there. It's very rare. It's a very slow process. I think the coalition is moving very slowly. And in the end of the day, the coalition works through this SDF or the Syrian Kurdish coalition on the right. ground. They have to do it bit by bit. They don't want to lose people. And I think in, if you listen to the American comments, basically the idea is this could take another six months or a while. 